Welcome, dear viewers. Today, we embark on a fascinating journey to uncover the rich and often overlooked biblical history of Lebanon, a land renowned for its breathtaking landscapes and majestic cedar forests. But did you know that Lebanon holds a pivotal place in the story of God's redemptive plan for humanity? As we delve into the ancient narratives, we'll explore how this small region has been a stage for both divine judgment and hope, glory, and corruption. Through the lens of Scripture, we will uncover the profound lessons this land has to teach us about pride, faith, and redemption. Chapter 1 The Land of Lebanon Lebanon is not just a land of beauty, it stands as a representation of God's natural wonders and His provision. The mighty cedars that grow tall in its mountains are often referenced in the Bible as symbols of stability, grandeur, and divine creation. In Psalm 92 verse 12, it says, The righteous will flourish like a palm tree, they will grow like a cedar of Lebanon. This beautiful metaphor highlights the strength and resilience that come from being rooted in God. Just as the cedars are deeply rooted and can withstand harsh conditions, our faith, when firmly planted in God, can endure life's storms. Imagine walking through the ancient forests of Lebanon, the towering trees around you whispering stories of the past. Their deep roots spread far beneath the surface, anchoring them against the strongest winds. This natural phenomenon parallels our spiritual lives. When our roots are in the right soil, the soil of faith and trust in God, we can stand tall despite adversity. This lesson is not just for those in ancient times but for us today, as we navigate the complexities of life. Lebanon's geographical location also made it a cultural crossroads. Positioned along the Mediterranean, it became a center for trade, which brought not only material wealth but also cultural and religious exchanges. This blend of influences had both positive and negative effects on the region. While trade with Israel and other nations allowed for economic prosperity, it also opened the door to the introduction of foreign deities and practices. The introduction of these false gods would eventually lead to conflict and the need for divine correction. Chapter 2 Historical Interactions The relationship between Israel and Lebanon was a blend of cooperation and conflict. King Solomon's use of Lebanese cedar in constructing the temple was one of the most significant examples of collaboration between these two regions. The cedars of Lebanon were known for their quality, and it's said that they were used not only in the temple but also in Solomon's palace. It was a time of peace and prosperity a reflection of what happens when nations come together for a higher purpose. Solomon's reign is often seen as the golden age of Israel, where God's presence was symbolically made manifest through the temple. However, as time progressed, this peaceful coexistence was marred by darker chapters. The marriage of King Ahab to Jezebel, a princess from Sidon, introduced a period of spiritual decay in Israel. Jezebel was a staunch advocate of Baal worship, which led to the introduction of idolatrous practices in Israel. The corruption that Jezebel brought with her was not merely political, it was deeply spiritual. She established altars to Baal, persecuted the prophets of God, and led Israel astray. This period in Israel's history teaches us a powerful lesson about the dangers of spiritual compromise. Just as Israel fell under the influence of foreign gods, we too can be swayed by the distractions and false promises of our world today. Whether it's materialism, power, or pride, the idols we encounter may not look the same as Baal, but they can have the same destructive effect on our relationship with God. Chapter 3 The Prophetic Voices Elijah's confrontation with the prophets of Baal on Mount Carmel stands as one of the most dramatic moments in the Bible. Imagine the scene, hundreds of prophets of Baal chanting and cutting themselves, pleading for their God to respond. But there is only silence. Then, Elijah steps forward, confident in the power of the one true God. With a simple prayer, fire descends from heaven, consuming the altar and proving Yahweh's supremacy. This event speaks volumes about the nature of faith and the power of prayer. Elijah's trust in God was unshakable. 
In a world that often tells us to rely on ourselves, Elijah reminds us that true strength comes from surrendering to God's will. How many times in our lives do we find ourselves in situations where all seems lost, where the odds are stacked against us? In those moments, we are called to follow Elijah's example, to trust in God's timing, to pray with fervent faith, and to believe that he will answer. The prophetic warnings of Isaiah and Ezekiel regarding Lebanon echo throughout the ages. In Isaiah 2 verse 13, the prophet speaks of God's judgment on the proud and lofty cedars of Lebanon, a symbol of human arrogance. This judgment is not just about the physical trees but about the spiritual condition of those who place their trust in their own strength rather than in God. Ezekiel 31 draws a comparison between the mighty cedars of Lebanon and the great powers of the ancient world, warning that even the tallest and strongest will fall if they defy God. These prophecies serve as a cautionary tale for us today. In our modern society, we often place value on success, power, and self-reliance. We build empires of wealth, careers, and personal achievement, much like the towering cedars of Lebanon. But the Bible reminds us that without humility and submission to God, these cedars will eventually fall. It's a reminder to re-examine where we place our trust. Are we relying on our own abilities, or are we surrendering our plans to God? Chapter 4, Personal Reflections and Stories One personal reflection I'd like to share relates to a season in my life where I, too, was tempted to build my own cedars. Early in my career, I was consumed with the idea of success. I worked long hours, climbed the corporate ladder, and found myself increasingly proud of what I had accomplished. But beneath the surface, I was spiritually empty. The higher I climbed, the more disconnected I felt from God. It wasn't until a series of personal setbacks, health challenges, broken relationships, and financial struggles that I realized the cedars I had built were fragile. They were rooted in pride, not in faith. Through prayer and reflection, I learned the lesson that Isaiah and Ezekiel had warned about centuries before, pride goes before destruction, and a haughty spirit before a fall. God used the difficult season to humble me and to remind me that true success is not found in worldly achievements but in a life surrendered to Him. I also recall the story of a dear friend who, like the people of Israel, found himself drifting away from God due to the influences around him. He had always been a man of faith, but over time, the pressures of work and the desire for material wealth began to take precedence over his relationship with God. He started skipping church, stopped praying, and before long, his faith became a distant memory. It wasn't until he experienced a personal tragedy, a near-death accident, that he found his way back to God. In that moment, like the prodigal son, he realized that everything he had built was meaningless without the foundation of faith. This personal story resonates with the broader narrative of Lebanon's relationship with God. Just as my friend was able to find redemption and restoration, so too does Lebanon's story include a promise of hope. The Bible speaks of Lebanon's future glory, where its cedars will once again be used for God's purpose. This promise extends to all of us. No matter how far we've strayed or how much we've relied on our own strength, God offers us the chance to return to Him and to be a part of His divine plan. Chapter 5, The Future of Lebanon in Prophecy Lebanon's future is not just about judgment but also about restoration. Isaiah 35 verse 2 speaks of the glory of Lebanon, Carmel, and Sharon, saying, they will see the glory of the Lord, the splendor of our God. This vision is one of redemption and renewal, where the very trees that once symbolized human pride are transformed into symbols of God's splendor. In the book of Revelation, the cedars of Lebanon take on a prophetic significance, pointing toward the restoration of all creation. The New Jerusalem is described as a place where the glory of the nations will be brought into the city, Revelation 21 verse 26. Lebanon, with its rich history and prophetic significance, is part of this future glorification. The cedars, once used to build the temple, are a foreshadowing of the ultimate dwelling place of God with His people. In today's world, this prophecy reminds us that no matter how broken or corrupt something may seem, 
God has the power to redeem it. Just as he promises to restore Lebanon, he promises to restore us. Our past mistakes, our failures, and even our pride can be transformed by his grace. Lessons from Lebanon In summary, the story of Lebanon in the Bible is a rich tapestry woven with themes of pride, judgment, and redemption. As we reflect on these narratives, we are reminded that our lives, too, can become arenas for God's work. Like Lebanon, we may face challenges and temptations, but we also possess the capacity for growth and renewal through faith. Let us remember that pride comes before a fall, but humility opens the door to grace. In our journey, we are called to be more than spectators, we are participants in God's story. As Lebanon continues to stand as a symbol of both warning and hope, may we strive to align our hearts with God's purpose, embracing His sovereignty in every aspect of our lives. If this message resonates with you, hit that like button and let the universe know you're ready for your breakthrough. Subscribe to our channel for more transformative insights and guidance on your journey to abundance. Share this video with friends and family who need to hear this today. Let's amplify our positive energy together. Your engagement not only helps us grow but also strengthens the cosmic energy we are building as a community. Together, we can uplift each other and manifest our dreams into reality, one positive action at a time.